Good morning. Welcome to worship this third Sunday in Lent. Uh, we always have questions, don't we, when there's times of unrest, times of natural disaster, uh, political violence, we always wonder, why is this happening to those people? Uh, and today, Jesus addresses that question. A few announcements today. Uh, first of all, uh, we are having Lenten worship services on Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock, uh, and we hope that you will join us then. Uh, in addition, this Monday, uh, we're having a blood drive for the Red Cross, so uh, you are invited uh, to come uh, and to give your precious blood, uh, which we'll hear about Jesus' precious blood a little later today as well. With that, uh, let us begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's one additional announcement that I, I should have written down, because if I don't write it down, it doesn't get uh, announced, but I just want to say thank you to Joe and Kurt uh, for uh, leading worship and preaching these last couple weeks. Uh, I missed being here. Uh, the week before, I was at the Augustana District Confirmation Retreat, which is wonderful. Uh, had a good time. We grew in our knowledge of uh, the Reformation and the changes that came about with that. Uh, and then this last week, I was in Slayton, Minnesota, uh, Faith Community Lutheran Church. You've probably seen them in the prayers. Uh, they are a newly forming congregation. Uh, and today we will be praying for them because uh, their, annual, their first annual meeting is today. And they will be voting to join the LCMC uh, and the Augustana District today as well as uh, voting on a permanent council. So uh, they separated from the ELCA church that was in Slayton uh, and are now starting a new LCMC church. So we will keep them in our prayers. Uh, they were so grateful uh, that uh, you allowed me to go there and help out at this time uh, where they do not have a called pastor. So uh, you have their deep gratitude. With that, uh, our entrance hymn from the Lutheran Book of Worship, page 291, is Jesus Sinners Will Receive.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who hear their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Eternal Lord, your kingdom has broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and obey it so that we may become instruments of your redeeming love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson today is taken from Ezekiel chapter 33. So you mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways. The wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and, do, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How, how then can we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? And you, mortal, say to your people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not save them when they transgress. And as for the wickedness of the wicked, it shall not make them stumble when they turn from their wickedness. And the righteous shall not be able to live by their righteousness when they sin. 
Though I say to the righteous that they shall surely live, yet if they trust in their righteousness and commit in iniquity, none of their righteous deeds shall be remembered. But in the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, though I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, yet if they turn from their sin and do what is lawful and right, if the wicked restore to the pledge, give back what they have taken by robbery and walk in the statues of life, committing no iniquity, they shall surely live, they shall not die. None of the sins that they have committed shall be remembered against them. They have done what is lawful and right, they shall surely live. Yet your people say, the way of the Lord is not just, when, when, it, when it is that their own way that is not just, when the righteous turn from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. And when the wicked turn from their wickedness and do, and do what is lawful and right, they shall live by it. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, I will judge all of you according to your ways. We'll read responsibly Psalm 85. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord, you have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have withdrawn all of your fury and turned yourself from the wrathful indignation. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Righteousness shall go before the Lord and shall prepare for God a pathway. Our second lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate from the same spiritual food and all drank from the sp same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 of them fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you, that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Here ends the reading. Please rise as you're able for the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. At that very time, there were some who told Jesus about the Galileans 
whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There is a game we love to play. It's called Who's the Worst Sinner? We look at all the poster children for misbehavior that fill the newspapers, TV, and social media, and we say to ourselves, oh my, what a fool, what a jerk, what a crook, lock them up. We claim to like this system, the merit system, because after all, it's what they deserve, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And it's all in the Bible, after all. We even look at victims of natural disaster and political violence and wonder what it is that they have done to deserve or bring upon themselves such suffering. After the huge earthquake in Haiti in 2010, when an estimated 2,200 people were crushed by fallen buildings, there were many who claimed it must have happened because some Haitians practice voodoo. Even today, people are asking about the Ukrainians, what they have done that has caused them to be under attack. We so easily condemn others because we are blind to our own sins. Nobody's perfect, we say about ourselves, which is true, but then we continue with excuses, explanations, and justifications for all our misbehavior. We're somehow deluded into thinking that this merit system pays handsomely for our puny virtues and overlooks even our gross misdeeds. We think that the merit system is our friend. We think that if everyone just gets what they have coming to us, we'll be fine. We overlook the fact that we are included in the phrase, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We forget that when our system works as it's supposed to, none is righteous. No, not one. And so Jesus directs us back to ourselves to look at our own sins by asking, do you think that any of the people that you have passed judgment upon who have suffered, like the Galileans or those who were felled by the tower, were worse sinners than anyone gathered here in this church building today? No, Jesus tells us, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. We are to think not of the sins of Pilate's victims, but of our own sins and how we can be delivered of them before death overtakes us in whatever way divine providence may send it. Sudden, unforeseen, and calamitous accidents are always occurring. When we become aware of such horrific events happening, 
It's a personal call to repentance for each of us. Brutal murders, shocking accidents, death in whatever form are all sermons of God's law. The soul that sins will die. There is no escape except through Jesus Christ. The Lord does not operate by the merit system. And this is why we killed him. Yet as St. Peter explains, the Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. Jesus is the gardener, the one who intercedes for us. He is the mediator, who is also the atoning sacrifice. God's grace towards us is mediated wholly through God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. It is Christ Jesus who takes all our sins upon himself, claiming them as his own and declaring himself the worst sinner. On the cross, he has taken our punishment and suffered and died in our place, interceding for us as he cried out, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Christ is the gardener who says, let them alone. I will have mercy. I will deal with them in my own way. And what is his way? To declare to you and to me the entire forgiveness of all our sins through his precious blood and innocent suffering and death. A couple was visiting Innsbruck, Austria, and noticed the unbelievably beautiful red geraniums growing all along the front of an inn. What beautiful red flowers! How do you do it? What kind of fertilizer do you use? They asked the landlady. Blood, she replied. My husband brings a gallon of blood from the slaughterhouse each week. These flowers grow best with blood. Jesus gave his blood for us on the cross. His blood became fertilizer for us to become God's children, to grow in faith every day, and to bear the fruit of repentance. His blood saves us. His blood gives us new life. Faced with such mercy, we no longer need to hold on to the illusions of righteousness that have propped up our merit system. We are now set free, and we will go forth to take up the business of showing mercy to others. The mercy that we have been shown flows through us and pours forth upon others, abounding in fruit born not only in our lives, but in the lives of those around us. Gone is the condemnation of others, and gone is the self-righteousness that caused us to live our lives in fear. We are free to sin boldly and to believe in Christ all the more boldly still. The system of mercy now fertilizes the soil all around us. Amen.
gathered together as one body, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God and for all people according to their need. Almighty God, you order and number our days according to your wisdom. Give us repentant hearts, lest we perish with this world of violence and suffering, that we would hold fast to Christ for life and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, you take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but desire that they would turn and live. Give pastors courage to warn of sin and death. Give all Christians strength to, def to proclaim that message as well. Turn sinners to life by the proclamation of Christ, who delivers from all unrighteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, guard your people against immorality. Grant that our homes would be havens of godly instruction and chastity, and fill marriages with fidelity and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, you establish justice, not through the desires of sinners, but by your law, which is for all. Enlighten the authorities of this and every nation that they might rule justly for true good. Bring peace between Ukraine and Russia and protect our troops at home and abroad, especially Kylie Graff, Shane Clemen, Ethan Langseth, Jesse Kettner, Emily Went, Joseph Went, and Tabor Gluth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, remember your people who cry to you for mercy in a world where towers fall and sinners work evil. Deliver those in need of healing and comfort, especially Mo and Shirley Weber, Tegan Steffel, and Sherry Fenger, and strengthen them to look to you for help in their time of affliction. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, you have brought us into your vineyard and appointed us to bear good fruit. Receive our thanks for your patience and grant that we would show your love and grace in all that we do and say. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you led your people Israel through the sea and fed them in the wilderness until you delivered them to the promised land. You also have faithfully raised to new life your people by means of holy baptism and holy communion. Receive our thanks for your kindness to the saints who now rest from their labors and sustain us by your means of grace until you deliver us also to heaven through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and at all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. 
You bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. Renew our zeal and faith and life and bring us to the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. who was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life, and we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Receive now this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn in the Lutheran Book of Worship, page 93, is Jesus, Refuge for the Weary.